My name is John, and today I'm going to take you through the Snap Circuits kit. Uh, for this kit, all we really need is this uh, Snap Circuit box, and then we need a pack of batteries as well. Any AA batteries will really work. So when you open the kit up, this is what it looks like. Um, this piece right here is going to be your kind of like your circuit board. It's what you're going to build all your circuits on. Um, Right here in the middle, these are all resistors. Then you have some capacitors over here, and you have some LEDs down here. Um, this and this are both lamps. And over here, you have some switches. Uh, right here, you have a motor, and then you can fit the fan on it, like that. And we'll be using that later. Right here, these are your two battery packs. Uh, over here, these are different alarm sounds. And then all these little blue things, these are all what we're gonna be using as wires. And that's just kind of a brief introduction to what you look at when you have the kit. And then underneath here, you can pull this out. And then these are your two uh, kits that we're gonna be using. For the first project here, we're just going to do this project number one, which is the electric light and switch. Um, it's a pretty simple circuit, but it's just an introduction uh, to circuits. So we're, for this circuit, we're going to need uh, our little battery pack, a little three connector, um, a switch, then we also need our three volt lamp. You can see it says uh, three volts right there. And we'll get into why that's important later. So you can start off by uh, connecting your battery pack. Then you can do your connector piece. And then you put your switch on. And then whenever you're adding your switch to a circuit, you want to make sure that it's in the off position. Um, that way you know that the circuit isn't going to start until you want it to start, which uh, can be very important and it's a very uh, important safety measure. So we have our circuit built here, added in that lamp. Um, so let's flip the switch to on and see what happens. Yeah, uh, pretty simple. That light just turns on. Um, the battery pack is supplying voltage and current, and that, I'm gonna turn that on. That current is flowing all the way through in a complete circuit and it's running through the lamp, which is causing it to turn on. Um, so now let's go ahead and instead of the three volt uh, lamp, let's try this, uh, I don't know if you can see it. This is a six volt lamp. So we'll connect that in that same place, turn it on. And if you notice the light is com considerably dimmer than with a three volt lamp, and that's just because that this lamp has a higher rated voltage so it needs more voltage to push through it to create the same lamp, to create the same light that the three volt lamp would. But that also means where if you were say pushing 20 volts through this lamp, something very bad might happen and the lamp might explode, whereas this lamp might be able to, might be able to handle it. The yeah, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna build that same circuit that we had last time. But instead of a connector, we're gonna use this uh, 100 ohm resistor. And a resistor resists current, hence the name resistor. And we're gonna put that where the connector was last time. So I'm still going to put in the switch, and then we're gonna use an LED this time. And we'll, we'll put it this way first. So an LED is a light emitting diode, which means that it's a lamp that's only gonna turn on when current is flowing through it in the correct direction. Um, and you can see that this arrow shows that the current needs to be flowing that way for this lamp to turn on. So if we turn on this switch, nothing happens. Um, so that must mean our current is going wrong. So we'll flip that, turn the switch on, and then that LED does turn on. And then, so we see that on this battery pack, Let's get those out of the way. Um, there's a plus sign on this side and then a minus sign on this side. This means that 
the current flows out of the plus side, and this is just going to be a universal law for, for circuits. Um, so the circuit flows out of this end, the current keeps flowing through here, through the resistor, and then through the LED going that way, which means that the current lines up with what is needed uh, for that LED to turn on. And we can plug the lamp back in, and we'll see the same thing. But there's no, the, the lamp doesn't turn on in this case. And that's because the resistor is resisting some of that voltage and then so not enough voltage is getting to the lamp to cause it to, to turn on. Whereas the LED is just based on the current flow. So the next project that we're going to be working on is, are these projects number five and number six. It's, it's a lamp and fan in series and then a lamp and fan in parallel. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is get started and build that project number five which is a lamp and fan in series. Um, so again, you'll need your battery pack for this one. Just put that on in the same place. You'll need your lamp, your, uh, your switch. Then you're also gonna need your motor and the little fan attachment. Um, so I'll start by putting down the lamp right here. And I'll put my switch and then I'll put my motor and fan on this side. Um, so let's see what happens when I turn the switch on. Um, so as you can see, the, the fan turns on and starts to run. Then the LED is also on, but very faintly. Um, and this is called a lamp and fan in series because you can, when you draw a straight line through the circuit, each of these elements is connected end to end, just like that. Um, so now we'll go ahead and build a... So now we're gonna move on to project number six. And this is just a slightly different variation of that project number five that we just did. Um, so again, you're gonna keep your battery pack in the same place. And you're gonna put down two of these four connector pieces like that. And then add in your switch, making sure it's in the off position. Um, and then you're going to add a three connector right here. Then you need, again, your lamp. And then your motor with that fan attachment. If I can get it on. Yep. So now we'll, we'll flip this switch this time and see what happens. Um, so if you can tell, uh, the lamp this time is running a lot brighter than it did when it was just in series and the motor is also turning a lot faster. So these are, the lamp and the motor are said to be connected in parallel and that's because the first nodes are all connected at, at together and then these bottom nodes are connected together. So that means that the voltage flowing through each of these circuit parts is gonna be the same. So again, you're gonna have more voltage thro flowing through uh, each of these components. So the lamp is gonna burn brighter and the motor is gonna turn faster. For this next part, we're gonna keep the circuit that's the exact same as in circuit six, but then we're gonna take an extra connector here and then we're gonna connect it right there. And then if we turn this on, nothing happens in the circuit. And that's because we've created a short circuit with this three connector piece. And because of that, when you turn this on, the current flows through the switch, but then since it has a direct path back to the battery by going here and then here, the circuit takes that pass, that path, and then therefore does not run through the lamp or the motor causing neither of them to turn. So you can kind of think as current as being extremely lazy. So it's gonna take the path of least resistance. Let's get forward here a little bit now, and we're gonna to go to uh, number, project number 250 or 251, uh, whichever you like, really. 
So I'm going to go ahead and build project number 250, which is a multi-speed light fan. Um, so we're going to start off by connecting our uh, battery pack right here. Then we're going to add in a five connector piece right here. But we're going to go ahead and put two little one piece connectors on the bottom side of it. Uh, You'll see why here in a second. And then uh, this also introduces this uh, alarm chip and you'll see what this does here in a second as well. And then this also introduces this photoreceptor. So things will change when you uh, cover that, that little hole with your finger. Um, it changes due to light. Um, then we're going to go ahead and put in our motor there. And if you were doing project number 251, you would just replace the motor with uh, the three volt uh, lamp. So then from there, we're going to go ahead and connect a diode right there. It can be red or green. Um, then we're going to add another single dot right here and connect that then we're going to use our six piece connector right here uh, we're going to connect the photoreceptor a three piece connector and then we're also going to connect a switch and then this will basically act as our switch for the circuit and we will oh, connect that right here. And then finally, we'll add a three-piece connector right there. Um, as you can tell right away, uh, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's an alarm going off, the fan is spinning, and then the light is going off. But if I cover that, then that stops it. If I hold that, the alarm sounds. But right when I let go, uh, that, that stops. So you can kind of go through the, this and keep doing this, and then there'll be a lot of different variations. Um, and then you can kind of just see and explore what that Space War IC chip does. It's kind of cool to see all, all the different uh, variations it can do. So that pretty much covers what I wanted to show you. Um, through those three kits there, it kind of gave you a, little, a base understanding of how circuits work. Um, I really encourage you to go through these two manuals, pick out a couple other projects that look interesting to you, and maybe that introduce other parts of the circuit kit that we didn't get to. Um, and mess around with the circuits to see if you can get it to do different things. That's honestly one of the best ways to learn circuits. And if you have any questions, um, Google is going to be your best friend if your teacher can't uh, answer it for you. Um, there's so many different answers on, on online or on YouTube. And you can go on YouTube and I'm sure that there's other cool circuits that you can build that aren't included um, in either of the two manuals. So I really encourage you to just kind of mess around with it and see what you can learn.